waiting a long time for this. You've never been to Italy yet. No, man. I'm, oh I'm so excited. You think the restaurant's gonna be fine? I think so. I right. can guarantee you, though, that the guys are expecting me to come back in these two weeks, take the menu, <laughs> throw it out the window, and I like, yeah. have all these great ideas. clicks to go, it's all programmed in, so. Beauty. I don't want to get lost. I don't want to get lost either. You got the same problem, you should have backed up in, in that way. I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. I don't know what the speed limit is, but I'm already going 130, I think it's fine. Are you? Yeah, I don't see a sign. I, I don't see anything. I just see open road. I see opportunity. I, I think uh, I think going to the farm is going to be cool because it's it's so rustic. Yeah, like that slow food movement. Just meeting with some people that approach life differently. It's going to be great. This is going to be one of many things that we're going to do on this trip. That's going to just help us reconnect with, uh, with food and with our roots too, right? Because no. we're, we're both half Italian. You've never been to Italy, so never. I hear the farm's got a winery. Good thing I'm thirsty. Almost here. We're right in the heart of Toscana. Place. That's like a crazy view, eh? Yeah, that's why. Like, honestly. Well, we should probably unload our before we go to the fucking parking lot, you dummy. Yeah, I guess so. Reception. Wow. That was amazing. Yeah, you don't drive like that often. I was ripping it, eh? Oh, you did a good job. Broke my room. Sure. It's a quad. Four wheel. But I was very lucky because two tourists saw me. Oh, and they, they rescued you a little bit. Because I'm alive. You're very lucky. <laughs> yes. Very lucky. Oh. Wash your feet like Jesus. <laughs> Get a glass. Um, it is from here. Salud. Must be their grapes and everything. That's cool. Really, really nice. Really good. But I will have some chutes and though. I love this too. Who is the chef? You are the chef? We're both chefs. <laughs> How are you doing? You. Nice Bye. to meet you, Rob. Nice to meet you too. I'm Craig. 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 Pleasure. Welcome in Poggio Falco. I'm very excited to guest you. This you are coming from, from, from Toronto right now. Right. Yeah. So we're both like, we've pretty much been up all night. So you, you, you did sleep a lot? Mm, bare, barely. Yeah. And you have so different kind of thing to do, you know? Perfect. Amazing. You, you, we are ready to do everything you I think. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Yeah. All the food here is made by hand. Yeah. Really simple, uh, traditional food with, with uh, a great taste. That's all, yeah. 
That's what we want. Beautiful. That's an uh, aqua cotta. Yeah. We used to call in English, uh, we can translate uh, as uh, cooked water. Dopo soffritta la panna, si mette qui e si fa favorizzare. So, so vegetables, uh, meat, and after one. Tanto, tanto. Tanto, tanto. All right, cipolla. Mettiamo in padella. Sì. Do, uh, do it? No, no, no poco, just poco. questo. Peppers, hot peppers, pepperoncino. So. Ah, okay. Okay, I'm sorry, okay. Tutta. Tutta, okay. Chiara, deve essere cotta, cotta. Torno poco. Okay. O mangio un po' la, la, la pranzo, la cena? A tutti i pasti, non è colazione? No, colazione no. Ma se buono per colazione? Sì. Un pochino più di acqua perché deve bagnare il pane. Più lunga. L'acqua. Bellissimo. Bellissimo. Poor food means made in, in, the, in the country area. Each kind of food made in, in a real country area has a different taste than the, the food made in factories, mm -hmm. you know? Even back in Toronto, people eat it, they love it. It's all over, in our, both of our restaurants, all of our dishes are very simple, peasant style, and that's what people love. Beautiful. Okay. Pappardelle with wild boar. Yeah. Okay? And this is a cacotta without egg. Dash it to Yeah. Bread. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. So this is like very, very traditional. But most traditional than this is impossible. Yeah. The first plate and this plate are really tradition. 200 year tradition. I do like this first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And now you put on the steak. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. It smells so good. Not olive oil on because uh, yeah, smoke. Smoke. After. And after, of course. How do you like your steak, Rob? Oh, You're gonna have it however it comes out. You got it. Okay. <laughs> I've definitely never cooked this uh, a T-bone on a hot rock before. Wow. This is the money one here. The tenderloin? Yeah. The last bit of tenderloin on there. I'll help you, but just put it down. <laughs> you haven't eaten your body weight in food yet.
That was uh, an absolutely outstanding lunch. The perfect way to start our yeah. trip. I that mean, was my first meal in Italy. I'm so I'm so proud to to have you here for the for your first time in Italy. <laughs> it was good. Now we are going to the vineyard. Yeah. To finish our harvest. The last grape. The last. Uh, two line of uh, vineyard. They have so they, much sugar, they're gonna explode. The autumn is really important for the grape because uh, the different temperature from the, from the day and the night uh, get the skin thicker mm -hmm. and uh, all the bad things in the red wine are in, in the skin. Mm -hmm. We are a totally a full organic farm from the vineyard to the wine cellar, few minutes. Yes. This is incredible. The direction of the line is the side from the direction of the wind. If the breeze come into the line, yeah. it dry. Exactly. And I don't need to, to, worry. to put the chemical product in the vineyard. Right. Now you are going to harvest. Let's go. <laughs> Cabernet Sauvignon, Perfect. Look at this, it's so amazing. It's awesome. They're so sweet. Holy cow. They're starting to get. Mm, some of these clumps are so small, eh? There's so many just little clumps. <clears throat> Great to see the, like, to see it right from the source, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's something else. Perfect little Watch cluster. If I've ever seen one. So nice. And it's about time I start making some. Very nice, huh? So right now, these are the fermentation tanks. Sure. Still fermenting now, and the fermentation produces CO2. Right. Okay. And the CO2 move up all the skin. You you can smell the CO2. Oh, I can smell. So right now this is all Cabernet. And now uh, Katia. Two di Cabernet, Anat, okay. It's so cool to see. The steps of the, like each step of the winemaking process, from the harvesting, the sorting, the pressing. Now you know this is in, this is in fermentation, right? It definitely gives me a, a new respect for every every time I open a bottle of wine. Now you really realize what goes into it. So it's amazing. Crazy. Simple. You know? Yeah. yeah. Two days born. Two days born. You have any taste of sugar though. Still sugar. Yeah. <laughs> it's the last day. The 
harvest is finished. Finished? Very, very good. Good work, good work. <laughs> oh my god. Look, they don't want to come here because we're here, eh? That's crazy. Makes you think how, like, how reactive they are to, like, people and stuff, right? They're very, like, fearful, eh? I mean, they have so much interaction yeah. with people, you'd think they'd be a little more docile. No, they're not. And they, because the way they, stay, they stick together, they're trying to protect each other, you know? I guess. Strength and numbers. That's it. Nobody right? wants to be left behind. No. This is uh, a gift for you. <laughs> ah, I asked to a friend of mine to make it. Oh, yeah, you say yeah. incredible, hey? Yeah. Look at that. Okay. Now you will do this. Wow. And you start to work. And get it started, right? Maybe and then you can then you can take the skin off. Beautiful look. Pecorino? Mm -hmm. Organic pecorino. <laughs> okay. I take. I would just take that. This. You gotta get the leaf fat off, eh? That's, that's kind of. Oh yeah, for sure. It's kind of gnarly. Let me get this bit of skin off here. The skin is it's unbelievable. Skin turns like plastic, eh? I know. Look, look at it. <laughs> Cabernet Sauvignon, and this this one is Sangiovese, 100 percent. I prefer that. <laughs> I mean, it's very rare to get a rosa a rosato with this beautiful auburn hue to it. It's our first evening here, and uh, sunset. It's beautiful. Carving a nice ham. This is why my grandfather used to carve ham. It's really funny. He never had a slicer. No, you do it by hand. Yeah, he yeah, did it by is... hand, and uh, when you get close to the bone, you just scrape it on it. It's crazy. This is the old school method. Yeah. Okay, this I'm scrape. not going to wait for you. I'm going to dig into this wine. Dig in, buddy. And this prosciutto. See how it is. How is it? Mm. It's great. It has a real. Certain it's really clean tasting, mild. This is a friend that, that makes this ham? Friend of mine. It's artisan. This is the number 136. 136. That he's made? Yeah. In his life. So, very artisan. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You can buy only if you know who make. Mm -hmm. If not, you can't. It does have a grassiness about it. Mm -hmm. Because the animal is wild, and so move a lot. So no fat meat, just a little bit. Yeah. This is an amazing place. I came here the first time I was 11 years old. Everything was destroyed, totally destroyed. And my father started to to rebuild everything. I came here to live in May 1999. Right. I never forget the time that I left Verona on Friday and on Sunday say, I don't have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> you made the right choice. I live here. Of course, look at that. I mean.
On our next episode, we'll search out wild boar at an incredible rustic Tuscan lunch, then walk it off exploring a medieval castle and build up an appetite for a raw pork sausage, which will wash down with wine as the sun sets over the Poggio Foco vineyard. Mm -hmm.